Today, we are diving into one of the most crucial elements in DIY robotics, that is a DC motor. We'll be taking a look at how a DC motor works, where it can be used, how to drive a DC motor, and we'll be giving you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to make your own robot using DC motors. But don't worry guys, we'll be explaining everything in simple English so that it will be very easy for you to understand. And by the end of this video, you will be having a very good understanding of how a DC motor works and you will be having enough knowledge to make your own robot using DC motor. And before going forward, if you like this video, make sure you give this video a like. And if you are a huge fan of DIY robotics, do check out our channel. You are going to find so many video tutorials that might be interesting for you. So let's get started. So what exactly is a DC motor? DC motor is a device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy or a rotational motion. The DC in DC motor stands for direct current. That means this kind of motors operates on direct current, not the alternating current. And this DC motor will be having two terminals, terminal A and B, where we'll be applying the positive and negative voltages of a DC voltage source. But how does a machine so small like this converts electrical energy to mechanical energy? Well, let's take a look at the working of the DC motor. Now, imagine a DC motor as a small machine that has two parts. One moving part called rotor that consists of some windings and a non-moving part called stator that contains some kind of magnetic material which will act as a stationary magnet. Now, when a potential difference is applied across its terminals, two magnetic fields will be created inside the casing one created by the stator as well as the other created by the rotor. So, as you know, like poles repels each other, no? North pole repels north pole and south pole repels south pole. In the starting point, the north pole of the stator will be pointing towards the north pole of the rotor and they will be repelling each other. But since rotor is a moving part, it will be trying to move away from the north pole of the stator. But the rotor in the motor is assembled in such a way that after each half rotation, the polarity of the magnetic field of the rotor will be reversed. That means as the north pole of the rotor approaches the south pole of the stator, it will be automatically changed to south pole. So it will again get repelled. That means it will continue the motion. So because of this change in polarity, the spinning motion continues. And this rotor will be usually connected to a shaft and this shaft can be connected to wheels. So this is basically how we will be turning the wheels of the robot using a DC motor. So if you want to know more about the assembly of the DC motor, please do let us know in the comments below. So we will be creating a separate video for that. Now I will give you a small tip that might save a lot of your money. One important thing that you should keep in your mind before buying a DC motor for your project is its specifications such as voltage requirements, current requirement as well as the torque that you require. As you know, all DC motors are not the same. Some will be driven by 5V, some will be driven by 3.3V, 12V, 36V. It all depends on the torque as well as the size. And for that reason, it is very important for us to understand the specification of the DC motor as well as the components that will drive the DC motor. And for that reason, before adding components to your circuit, it's always a good idea to understand everything about the components such as the availability, specification, the price, etc. And for this, I will recommend a free site called Octopart, which is an electronic component search engine from where you will get complete information about all the components that you will need for your project. You can also use Octopart to find the components that meets your requirement. You can even purchase the component by clicking the link there itself. It's a free solution for almost all of your programs regarding components and you will get everything in one place. This is also going to be really useful for you guys. So make sure you check it out. Earlier I told you that DC motor will be working on DC voltages, right? So let me ask you a question. What will happen if the polarity of the terminals of the DC motor is changed? Let's say we have a 9 volt battery and a DC motor. In the 9 volt battery, we'll be having two terminals positive terminal and negative terminal. For the DC motor, we'll be having two terminals, terminal A and terminal B. Let's say we connect positive terminal of the battery to terminal A of DC motor and negative terminal of the battery to terminal B of DC motor. Let's say at that time, the motor rotated clockwise direction. 
but what will happen if the polarity is reversed that is what will happen if we connect positive terminal of the battery to terminal B of DC motor and negative terminal of the battery to terminal A of DC motor yes you guessed it right the direction of rotation will be reversed that means this time the motor will be rotating in anti-clockwise direction this property is really useful because when we are considering a robot we will need to move the robot forward backward left as well as right no but each time changing the polarity physically when we want to change the direction of the robot is not practical right but there is a simple solution we'll be using a special type of circuit called edge split circuit you can think edge split circuit like a switch that can switch the direction of the motor spin and the circuit is called edge splits because the whole circuit looks like an edge okay guys this is a simple edge split circuit and there are mainly four switches s1 s1 dash and s2 and s2 dash and if you take a closer look there is one more switch right here it's called enable switch we will get back to that in a minute here s1 and s2 will be the two switches that we will be controlling as you can see here s2 and s2 dash are complement to each other and s1 dash and s1 are complement to each other that means when s1 is zero s1 dash will be one and likewise when s1 is zero s1 dash will be one the same goes for s2 and s2 dash and here you can see a motor with two terminals ta and tb and the whole circuit is powered by a 9 volt battery now let's close s1 and open s2 what will happen when s1 is closed s1 dash will be open why because s1 and s1 dash will be complement and it will be exactly the opposite and when s2 is open s2 dash will be closed now let's see what happens if we switch on the circuit we can see that the current from the 9 volt battery flows through the enable switch through switch s1 since it is closed enters through the terminal a of the motor and exits through the terminal b and goes through s2 dash and enters the negative terminal of the battery now as you can see here terminal a of the motor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and terminal b is connected to the negative terminal of the battery at this time the motor will be rotating in a clockwise direction now let's open switch s1 and close switch s2 now when s1 is open s1 dash will be closed because it will be the exact opposite no like that when s2 is closed s2 dash will be open for the same reason now let's turn on the circuit and see what happens the current from the 9 volt battery will be going through the enable pin through switch s2 and enters the motor through terminal b of the motor and exit the motor through terminal a of the motor passes through switch s1 dash and enters the negative terminal of the battery at this time terminal b is connected to the positive terminal of the battery as well as terminal a is connected to the negative terminal of the battery that means the polarity is completely reversed that means at this time the motor will be turning anti-clockwise direction now if you are curious you might be wondering what will happen when s1 and s2 are both open well in this case the circuit is open that means the current from 9 volt battery has no way to travel from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery likewise when s1 and s2 are both closed s1 dash and s2 dash will be completely open so the potential difference between the terminal a and terminal b of the battery remains 9 volt and for that reason this motor won't be rotating this is how a simple head speed circuit works and this is how we control the direction of motors in the case of DIY robots now talking about circuits if you are someone who is really interested in making your own circuit for your projects i will introduce you to a tool that might be really useful for you and your projects altium is a pcb designer that can be used to create simple pcbs for hobby projects or complex and multi-layer pcbs for industrial use it's easy to create our own pcbs using altium if you are a diy electronics enthusiast you are really gonna love it altium subscription includes something called altium 365 which lets you design share and manufacture your project everything in one place secure centralized cloud storage lets you share your design and ideas with teammates or clients easily it also helps you bring together your previously separate component libraries into one secure location which will be accessible to your entire team you can download and install the free trial version from the description down below and if you're a student you get a six month full license absolutely free so don't miss out now let's take a look at some of the most useful applications of dc motors in the field of robotics as well as electronics 
Like I mentioned earlier, DC motors are widely used in the wheels as well as tracks of the robots that will enable the robot to move robots in various directions. Also, DC motors creates movements in animatronics creations, adding lifelike motions to characters and objects, often seen in amusement parks and artistic displays. DC motors can be used in control curtains, blinds, or other home automation projects, adding convenience to everyday tasks. It also drives conveyor belts and sorting mechanisms, facilitating the movements and organization of objects in industrial settings like warehouse as well as factories. Now for the fun part, let's make a robot driven using DC motors. Check out the part 2 of this video where we provide complete step-by-step -step instructions on how to make your own robot using Arduino from scratch. If you have any doubts, make sure you ask it in the comments down below. Also, if you find this video useful, make sure to give this video a like and support our channel.